All right, uh, this came out of an estate. Um, and uh, this fellow must have needed a unit to gain buffer. So high impedance to some, drive something. Unit to gain, high impedance. OPA128, we'll have to find a data sheet for that. We'll call it chip of the day. We'll call it chip of the day, OPA128. Uh, 75 femtoamp input uh, impedance. And it looks like it has a uh, 3dB roll off at 150 kilohertz and a three and a half volt micro per microsecond um, slew rate. So uh, let's let's take a look at his construction techniques here. He's using good parts. He's using a Pomona parts, Pomona box, Pomona uh, banana jack, uh, banana, banana plugs. Uh, I love these. Uh, the, these are my favorite, these right angle ones, because uh, then you've got the top still available to, to do things with. But looks like it's plus or minus and ground. And this this is a shielded wire, so he has the shield also kind of wrapped around going in here, so the shield is connected to the ground. Um, oh, there we go. In and out. All right, let's uh, take a peek inside. These are short screws. Not as short as they get. Looks like they're uh, modified. They look like somebody made them even shorter than they were originally. All right, make sure I don't lose those. Put, put them over there. Open up. There we go. Uh, okay. Um, the box is going to pull on the cord here, so it's going to be hard to see. There we go. There we go. Can you see in there with the, with not, not having the lighting that great. So it's a uh, metal can uh, op amp, dead bug. Dead bug meaning that chip is upside down, so little legs are up on the top. Um, it's got some power goes into a diode protected, so you can only get it the right way around. Green wire. Uh, is negative. And Red wire is positive. And then he uses the construction technique of taking a single-sided PC board and then cutting grooves in it. So you have isolated pads and then uh, soldering onto those pads as little terminal blocks. So pretty nice. Pretty nice. Uh, yeah, soldering's not terrible. Not great, but not terrible. Lots of uh, heat shrinks and nothing shorts out. So there, there we go. Looks pretty, pretty standard fare. So let's pop it together, and uh, let's see if we can reproduce those numbers he has printed on there. We will uh, sweep the filter and uh, take a look at its frequency response. Jeez. Hmm. Never become an old man. Things get harder and harder. become an impatient old man, which I am. <laughs> My father had all the patience in the world. He did woodworking and he just had lots of patience when he did his craft. And I have no patience at all. So things usually take me twice as long.
All right, let's uh, straighten this wire out so we can reach my reach my power supply. We'll just plug it on over here since it's ready to be plugged in. So we'll take the so I have it all connected up, all the inputs and outputs. Uh, channel one looks at the input, channel two looks at the output. And then we'll come over to the oscilloscope. We will sweep, let's say from uh, one kilohertz to one megahertz. And take a look at that. All right, so um, I left this in um, as you will probably do this once in your life. And that is you get it all set up and you do the plot and you say, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense at all. It should be unity gain. It should be nice and flat. It should roll off at the end. Uh, what's going on? We don't even seem to have unity gain. Um, but there does seem to be a signal through the system. Um, and then you say, you're an idiot because you didn't turn the power on. <laughs> yeah, so you need to turn the power on. Okay, let's, uh, let's see if it's running this time. Let's see if we're getting good data. Well, the input and the output look better. <laughs> they look kind of the same. The scales are a little bit off on the two. It's just a temporary scale they put in here to get a, a measurement. But you can see that we're, we're zipping along here at... Uh, Right about 60 milli dBs. Yeah, minus 60 milli dBs, which is zero, right? <laughs> milli, not, not, not micro, not. Yeah, we should be coming up on a roll off here. And yeah, not much of a roll off. It's a pretty zippy part. Uh, you can see the little, the little kink there. So yeah, it is uh, it is doing what it's doing. Let's make this bigger so for your enjoyment. We can make that big, or we can make this smaller. And there we go, beauty, beauty. So it's doing pretty flat out to about a hundred kilohertz. This is a hundred kilohertz here, and then blah. So yep. It is what it is. That's pretty good. Now what we could do is we could take a look at the um, edge response. So let's see if we can't do that. So we are going to go back to the beginning. We'll turn on the uh, wave generator and we'll put in a square wave. And we'll put in a frequency of one kilohertz and amplitude of, let's say, one volt. And it'll go wacka wacka. You can see it right there, or wacka ing. So we're going to pull this up. And then we're going to zoom in. And we can take a look at our rise time. We could do that with a measurement here. It's a little bit dark. See waveform intensity. There you go, and a grid intensity. Let's uh, let's make the grid the grid brighter. I should set up some defaults that are better than these. There we go. 
Okay, now let's um, let's uh, turn on a measurement, and we'll do a rise time measurement, which is time, and rise time, add rise time, there we go. And right down here, you might have a hard time reading it, but uh, our rise time, let's see, we want slew rate, don't we? Does this have slew rate built in? Let's take a look. Slew rate, that would be voltage. Uh, slew, where's slew? Uh, and then time was it? Time at edge. Let's see. We'll just say all. Gotta be slew rate, right? S. No slew rate. Rising edge. Uh Time it as rising edge slew. Here we go, slew rate. Right there in my, looking me right in the face. Add slew rate. All right, so we're getting, uh, current is around 390 megavolts per second. Uh, what did the little box say? Uh, let's get Flip this around, here we go. Three and a half volts per microsecond. Three and a half volts per microsecond. Megavolt, yeah, that'd be right. So, volts per microsecond, sorry about the camera work. Uh, volts per microsecond, the microsecond is 10 to the minus six. If you bring that up to the, up to the um, numerator, it becomes 10 to the sixth. So we have, um, 10 to the 6 volts per second, same thing as volts per microsecond. So that's a good learning experience there. So yeah, I get about the same, same value, even a little bit, little bit quicker, but about the same. So there we go. So we uh, have validated, we have a good box. Um, let's go ahead and take these off. So a little handy box, if I need some kind of uh, 75 femtoamp input, uh, unit of gain, so yeah, I like it. So let's look at the uh, data sheet, the OPA128, DIFET electrometer grade operational amplifier. Uh, yeah, 75 femtoamps, low offset, 500 microvolts, low drift, open loop gain, lots of gain, 110 dB. Rejection 90, yes, night part. Improved replacement for the uh, other guys here. Uh, so we have uh, FET inputs um, and noise-free cast code. That's interesting. Uh, there is a trim pot. So if you wanted to really tweak this thing down, uh, you can put a trim pot on it. I didn't see one inside the little box there, but it has one. It has some built-in resistors inside for the uh, for the uh, two stages here. And uh, yeah, let's uh, radiation hard equipment is interesting. All right, let's look at some numbers. Uh, there's different grades. Uh, it's dead bug, so I can't, <laughs> I can't per turn it over. He says it's 75 though. So it's probably the SM version. Or this one, K, K version. That's probably the K version. That's pretty pretty common. It's probably this one. Probably this one here. Oops. Can't circle things. Um, yeah. At 10 hertz, 92 nanovolts per root hertz. Uh, impedance, uh, 10 to the 13th ohms. Pretty nice stuff. Common mode, reduced. This is 10 to the 15th, very nice. Open loop gain we already talked about. Uh, let's see here, voltage output, uh, plus and minus 13 typical. Current output, 
10 milliamps. Eh, not too bad of a part. I like it. Uh, normal temperature grade, 70 C. Let's see if there's any plots of interest. Oh, that's what it looks like. Give you a picture of what the die looks like. Open look at response. Goes flat and then rolls off. A little bit of bump there. Um, power supply bias. Gain bandwidth one and a half megahertz. Yeah, slew rate. There's our uh, um, thirty-five uh, volts per microsecond. So these graphs are kind of confusing because they have one uh, y-axis here and one y-axis here, depending on how you're reading it. So you can convert slew rate into gain bandwidth. Um, all right, that's uh, offset voltage adjustment. So here's the little tweak you can put on it. Uh, when you're laying out the PC board, a lot of times you'll put a guard trace around the input pins. If it's 75 femtoamps, you kind of need to do that. Or you need to bring those two legs up and put them on Teflon standoffs and stuff. But it's pretty common to put a guard ring around the, uh, around the inputs. Uh, high impedance applica application. Uh, so have a driven guard. Guard. Yeah, driven guard. So that's pretty cool. Let's see here. Here they're using uh, burr brown parts to drive a burr brown part. Of course, sell more parts that way. Sensitive photodiode amp. So, uh, cascode, or I mean, trans impedance, sorry. Trans impedance amplifier. Less than one picofarad to prevent gain peaking. Current to voltage converter. Hey, look at that. That's pretty cool. That trans impedance amplifier. And here is a current to voltage. I don't know. Different versions of the same things. Anyway, there you go. That was a chip of the day and box of the day. Um, An OPA 128.